I only have a vague idea of what I'm doing today and where I'm gonna spend tonight. But I guess that's part of the adventure and I'm just trying to embrace it. So we'll see where I end up. I'd like to get to Chimani Mani, which is a national park on the border of Zimbabwe. But I'm not sure if I'll make it that far. There are a couple other options that I found on iOverland, uh, the app. So we'll see. I'm going to get onto the main road, into a bit of cell phone signal and then do some research. been pulled over four times this morning so far all four times guys wanting cool drinks from me or money or cigarettes or something I don't have anything to offer it's just really starting to piss me off <laughs> I know I made light of it on the way up here and I guess it is just part of one of the prices you pay for traveling in these parts of the world but also at the same time it's also Bullshit. You know, I'm doing nothing wrong. I'm here traveling as a tourist, bringing money to the local economy. I doubt I'll even post this, but just a small rant because it really is starting to piss me off. Literally, anybody that carries a gun and that is a government employee, they feel like they have the right to stop me on the road and ask me for free, even though I've done nothing wrong. But yeah, rant over. Journey to Chimoy continues. Some airtime from Thank these you. fine gentlemen. There you go. Now I got airtime. Stopped quickly to top up Jabari's wood supply so I can make a bra tonight. You cook some steak. It cost me 50 minutes. I have a little self imposed rule that I don't argue with the guys if, if I think it's a very reasonable price. Um, I also picked up some cashew nuts. Nice big bag of Mozambique cashews. And the cashews cost me, this was 25 rand, so about two US dollars. I'm now on the EN6, so I'm on the road that goes between Baira and Zimbabwe. It's, a, it's quite a major trade route, this. Um, and it's a big road and it's not very potholed, it's quite strange. Um, so I gotta stop being careful about my speed limit again because I don't wanna get pulled over by the Mozambican police because they love me. <laughs> Stop quickly to get some pow. Probably my favorite thing about Mozambique. I am getting close to the Chimani Mani Mountains, and let me just tell you, I haven't been sure what to expect, but the first mountains that I've come across literally took my breath away. I don't know how to describe them. They're unlike anything I've ever seen before. They, they look like these huge domes, and like domes on top of domes. It's like it's like someone took like molten lava and like just lobbed it onto the surface it's incredible i'm sure that is not how it occurred that is not how it was developed um, or created <laughs> um, but yeah first impression is really beautiful i just wanted to catch you guys up i stopped in shimoy which is the major city on the western edge of mozambique that's basically like a gateway to zimbabwe and I stopped there, bought some supplies, had to buy a new pot because my pot got stolen by the bloody baboons in Gorongosa. I'm um, also just stocked up on a couple of basic food stuff so that I've got a, a bit of independence now and I'm not dependent on uh, having to go to shops or anything like that because I don't really know where I'm going. <laughs> yeah, genuinely, there are two places marked on iOverlander on the app, both with relatively recent reviews. One is in the National Park, the Chimani Mani National Park, which is uh, Mozambique's newest national park. Um, and the other one is on the edge of the park in what they describe as a forest reserve. And I did some more reading and it's apparently a buffer zone for the national park. So that's the community campsite. Um, and that's where I am going now. I think I'm about 50 or 60 kilometers away. I haven't managed to get hold of them. I bought airtime to try and find them, it didn't work. So I'm just showing up and hoping that someone can give me somewhere to set up camp. I don't expect much more than that. I'd like to explore the Chimani Mani Mountains a bit. I think this could be an amazing episode in and of itself. Let's see how things play out. Hopefully I'm able to find some accommodation. But uh, worst case scenario is not the absolute worst. I do have the iCamp on the roof and I can set up just about anywhere. 
I've already downloaded the phrase for do you mind if I sleep in my car here and if necessary I'll pull over and ask somebody if they mind if I camp in their backyard uh, we've done it before <laughs> um, so yeah we'll just see how things play out uh, it should be should be pretty interesting um, and this is probably just about the beginning of the next episode after Goran Goza so if that's the case, I hope you guys enjoy and let's uh, go explore the Chimani Mani Mountains. It's pretty cool. I'm pretty psyched. I think it's um, a spot that very few people know about. So let me let me take you there. <laughs> that's so cheesy. I hate it. Let me not take you there. Let me... You can sit and watch while I go there. Okay. <laughs> Can be pretty scary but this is what solo overlanding is all about pushing into the unknown to discover more not just about your destination but about yourself isn't that just one of the most amazing parts of travel in general is it even an adventure if there is certainty That's why I've never understood the people that travel across the world just to stay at a westernized resort with all the familiar comforts. That might be good for relaxation, but it's certainly not travel. So I'm driving through the craziest terrain, as I understand it. I'm right on the edge of the escarpment, basically, that goes up to Zimbabwe. And these are the foothills of the escarpment. But because it's right at the end of the dry season, this is the burning season. So all of the farmers are burning their lands to prepare them for the first rains that come in. But as a result, this mountain range is completely obscured by smoke. And it makes this incredible backdrop. I mean, it's not ideal, it's a huge amount of carbon that's getting released into the atmosphere, but it's, it's spectacular. But yeah, I thought I'd just give you guys an update. I'm meant to be five or six kilometers away from Nzao camp, where I'm hoping to spend the night, but I haven't spoken to anyone there, and it's a Sunday, and it's been COVID, so I hope that there is accommodation available for me. If not, my plan is to, I don't really know, uh, try find a quiet patch of land and set up my tent, so. <laughs> Might be coming back to this little road and setting up a tent here just for the night and then going into Chimani Mani National Park tomorrow, hopefully. Comes up as accommodation on tracks for Africa, which is actually normally a very good sign. <laughs> As much as I pride myself on being able to set up a bed anywhere I need to, it's always a big relief to find a beautiful demarcated campsite in the middle of nowhere. Luxury is a relative concept and this felt luxurious. So I'm pretty chuffed with myself. I'm in Mzao camp. I managed to find it. Uh, there was guys here straight away, super friendly. Uh, they even offered me a hot meal and very well priced. Um, there's no hot water, however, which is going to be a bit interesting. So they've given me a bucket of hot water and um, I'm going to wash with a cup. If the drive-in is anything to go by, I think this is a really, really beautiful area. So I'm not going to limit myself on how long I stay. I might stay for a couple of days. I was chatting to Nelson already, who I think he's a manager, and he was telling me about a project that they have with the local community where they're helping them 
set up beehives so that they don't slash and burn because uh, one of the big problems that they have in this area is deforestation. So there's a huge amount of slashing and burning for agriculture as we saw on the way in. You know, it's something that they're, they're trying to work to address. So that's pretty cool. And hopefully I'm gonna go tomorrow and see some of the work that they're doing to try and deal with it. But yeah, this is my little camp for the night. I, I've ordered half chicken for dinner so I don't have to cook. Um, and I'm gonna make a fire and get comfy. Yummy. Cheers, guys, and good night. Good morning, guys. I'm on the edge of the Chimani Mani National Park. I'm actually in the community area. So this is a community-run campsite called Nzao. And it's really pretty. It's in this beautiful natural forest. Um, and I'm hoping today to go out with them to see some of the work that they're trying to do to help slow down the deforestation that's happening in the area. So that could be really interesting. Also, apparently there's elephants in these forests. So there's a chance that we can try and find them. But um, I'm not going to get my hopes up with that too much. Um, as you guys all know by right now, I've spent a lot of time searching for elephants in different parts of Mozambique. So uh, if we find them, that'll be a bonus. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting into the forest, seeing what the bird life is like. There should be lots of bird life and hopefully some interesting stuff I've never seen before. So this is Jose, who's going to be my guide today. Bom dia, Jose. Bom dia, tudo bem? Estou bem, como está? <laughs> That's all my Portuguese, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the extent of it. Okay, so Jose is going to show me where we got to go to go and find, try and find these bees. So Jose is trying to find someone else that speaks a bit of English for us. Bom dia, como está? Estou bem. Okay, so unfortunately the one English speaker in the area that works here is not here today. So <laughs> not gonna have any English. I'm hoping that there's a tiny bit of cell phone signal up there so I can use Google Translate. Otherwise I'm just gonna have to try and figure it out. Um, I know the I know the basic idea here. They're um, trying to encourage the local community to protect the forest and not to slash and burn so much um, by incentivizing it a little bit, giving them a bit of an income. So they set up a market for the honey and a distribution network for it. It's a really interesting project in an area that clearly is getting hit very hard by deforestation. The Tumani Mani National Park on the Mozambican side has only recently been declared. And I think part of the reason that it's been declared is to give some formal protection to these incredible forests that are in this region. I am Aron, Richard. I am also a picture of And this is a lot of time. We have 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 a lot of time. We E por causa da do, do Mary, também vendemos para ter o dinheiro. Fora disso, há muito tempo, cortamos a árvore só para produzir, para ver o Mary. Cair, mandar cair o árvore só para procurar o Mary. Mas agora já não se corta a árvore por causa das cromeias. Talvez o, o cromeias que já vemos como o Zubio 1. E como estamos a conservar? Quando expomos aqui a cromeia, assim já não podemos queimar. Já não podemos cortar a árvore. It's been a very cool experience. <laughs> guys don't speak a word of English, so we ended up using Google Translate, but I have no idea what they said, so I have to now, in post-production, drop that into Google Translate and then I'll put subtitles on. I think this is all part of trying to incorporate the local communities in the national park, which is essential. It's, um, it's the only way to make it sustainable.
Um, so a very cool project and uh, it's been a lot of fun trying to film it between the Google translating and the obvious risk of getting stung by bees but I got some cool shots and uh, yeah hopefully hopefully it all comes together nicely. We are now going to go back to Nzao camp and I think we're going to go look for elephants. So it's an entirely different thing and uh, we're going to go for a walk in the national park. We'll see how that goes. Do you think we'll find them Jose? Good chance? No chance? Yeah. Good chance. Good time. Confident. Prepared. <laughs> Obrigado. It's not how it goes. It might just be a long hike, but uh, there's loads of birds and all sorts of other things that I'd love to see here, so I'm, I don't mind so much. So you can see some of the deforestation that's happening here. Um, so this is, we're not actually in the Chimani Mani National Park, we're in the community area that's a buffer zone to the national park. The forest here gets stripped and burnt and then planted with crops and but the, the problem is the big trees have all been destroyed. So my man Jose here doesn't seem super positive that we're going to find them. I'm enjoying it for a walk in the forest and it turns out to be a walk with elephants even better. It's medicina uh, for snake. For snake bites? Yeah, snake. It's starting to get some fresher elephant sign, which is reassuring. Maybe we'll still be in luck, who knows? Casca leva mastiga. Então, isso aqui se vê para. Para estar aí. Oh, this makes you strong. Si. <laughs> this tree. This is the Viagra tree, apparently. We've come out now to the little valley. I think this is maybe where the elephants come to drink sometimes. So that's why he would have brought us down here. Walked right down into the valley here. So it's going to be a hell of a walk back. But uh, it's awesome. It's a good adventure. Uh, this bush is very, very thick. It's probably not the safest thing I've ever done. So we didn't manage to find an elephant today, but uh, me and Jose are going to try tomorrow morning again at 5.30. It means I have to extend my stay here at Nzao camp. That's okay. I don't mind. It's a great spot. Might not be very healthy, but there's nothing tastier than a cold Coke, especially in a glass bottle. Nothing over. <laughs> yeah, mate. Not exactly fine dining. I had another bucket shower and then spent the rest of the day working before relaxing around the fire. Morning guys, look how amazing this mist is. The sun's about to come up. I've been up since about half past four. We were meant to get going at half past five, but I don't know what's happened with Jose. He seems to be a no-show. So I managed to get some drone shots now because I wanted to give you guys an establishing shot of what the forest looks like at dawn. So you guys can see those now, they're really beautiful. I just want to get in there on foot. We walked almost 10 kilometers yesterday with big elevation changes. So I'm feeling a little bit stiff, but it's not bad. We are off again. Mr. Jose had a little sleep in. No mato, no está bom. Okay. É por isso fiquei um pouco para acabar brilhar. Still no idea what the man says, but trusting him. <laughs> Otherwise, it's a beautiful time of day to go for a walk. So we just saw a red dacre, which is really cool. Super shy little antelope. Um, they're almost impossible to get photos of. And we also saw Norina trogan, which is a beautiful, very rare bird. No fresh signs of elephant, nothing that we didn't see yesterday. I might do 
did find out last night when I chatted to the manager of the lodge that there's less than 100 elephants in this reserve, so it's a tough ask. It's a really big jungle, this, so it is really difficult, but remain hopeful. Even if my guide seems a little bit despondent and disinterested. The freshest signs are the signs that we saw yesterday, so it's not looking very good. It kind of sucks, I'm not, not gonna lie. I was really hoping to see them, but uh, that's just the way the, the cookie crumbles sometimes, unfortunately. <laughs> Can't be a bad thing to go for a walk in a place like this. Head back to camp, have some breakfast, have a shower, pack up and head through to Chimani Mani National Park. Well, that's the plan for now, certainly. We'll see though, my plans have a way of changing. <laughs> it's been a good couple of days anyway at Nzao camp. So yeah, I'm gonna pack up camp, have a bucket shower here, because I think in the actual national park there aren't even bucket showers, um, and then get on the road. to get some sugar cane in the little town. <laughs> I used to always enjoy eating sugar cane as a kid traveling around Africa, so I bought some. See if I can still figure out how to get to the actual good stuff on the inside. <laughs> I'm now off the tar, heading towards Chimani Mani's main gate, hopefully. As there's so many of these parks in Mozambique, there's very little information available online about it, so Hopefully I'm heading in the right direction and worst case scenario, I have my tent on the roof. <laughs> but yeah, strange little town. First time I've actually felt like the people really were not welcoming at all. Not friendly, not nice. Bought some sugar cane. Could better get two words out of the lady. Oh my goodness, there's a whole bunch of turkeys. You can see that. Turkeys for sale. <laughs> How random. No pal, but hundreds of turkeys. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, dirt roads, feeling like really rural Africa, but let's let's see where the road takes us next. Apparently this Chimani Mani National Park is really beautiful, so I'm quite excited. beautiful spot I just found it's completely random it's just on the road into Chimani Mani and it's so beautiful look at this forest there's burning going on in the background there's a huge amount of burning this time of year a lot of it is um, started by the farmers to prepare the crops for the first rains or to prepare the fields for the first rains but it spreads um, and this entire area is hazy as a result so really not great for the environment but guess you you understand a farmer is trying to prepare his fields as best as possible. So I stopped to take a couple of photos of Jabari here because it's such a cool spot. And a couple of motorbikers came past and they were so friendly and so nice. And I'm so glad because I had that, that strange experience in town now. So it's awesome just to get back to the, the happy and friendly Mozambicans that I've learned to love so much. About 10 kilometers from Chimani Mani now, so we should get there pretty soon. I'm not sure if I'm gonna hike tomorrow ended up doing 22 kilometers looking for the elephant so my legs are quite sore and I, I didn't actually bring like hiking equipment so I'm not using the perfect setup uh, which I know is an excuse and people hike with much less but it's my excuse and I might stick with it but we'll see and I'm also itching to start heading south uh, whether that means heading straight back to SA uh, we'll see but yeah just uh, such a cool experience with a couple of animals and beacons now I took some cool portraits so take a look and tell me what you think
checked in at Chimani Mani. Uh, really excited actually. It'll be really cool. I'm going completely off the grid. There's gonna be no cell phone signal, there's no water, there's no electricity or anything. Um, and the park looks absolutely beautiful. Apparently there's even a lion and elephant and stuff here. Um, so that would be a real bonus, so that's not really why I'm here. I'm here for the scenic beauty. So yeah, let's go, let's go find our campsite. Okay, so a couple of things. This road to the camp is definitely not only for high clearance vehicles. It is low range four wheel drive. It is, it is tricky, it is steep. And I imagine when it's wet, it's pretty treacherous. So that's the first thing. The second thing is I've now been on this road for about two and a half hours, I think, to do 28 kilometers. That will also give you an idea of the level of driving required. I mean, I have been taking a couple of photos and stuff. I haven't gone quite as fast as I could, but a lot of it is low range, um, very steep. But yeah, first impressions of the park, incredible. I had no idea the mountain range was this impressive, and maybe that's silly of me, but there's so little available online when you research this park. There's an article from Time Magazine, and there's an article from the New York Post, I think, the website has got like one page with almost no details on it and a number that does not work. So I literally basically just stuck it in the GPS and drove here. But so far, I'm really glad that I did. Um, but yeah, let me get back to driving. This is, uh, this is serious driving, this. A high clearance vehicle will not get in here. You need a four wheel drive with low range, preferably. And even then, you probably need two cars if it's raining. This is pretty serious for my fun. But yeah, having fun. <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm here for after all. So I'm exploring this amazing new national park and hopefully I can really get it across to you guys and you can come and visit sometime because it's so beautiful. Imagine the Drakensberg with no people and no tourist infrastructure. It's just incredible. It is absolutely insanely beautiful here. Wow, that drive in is a real thing though. That is some tough four by four and in the wet it must be actually pretty scary. But wow, worth it. Look at this view, it's incredible. I haven't even seen the campsite yet. It's getting dark so I better hurry up and stop taking photos. This is unreal. Look at this. Because you're crawling up the side of this valley here. Crawling being the word, because it's so steep. This is insane. It's not incredible. Incredible doesn't actually even touch on it. I'm gonna have to come back here to show you guys this view when there's a bit more light and with the drone. It's basically like I'm driving up one of the ravines in the Scotland. It's just incredible. First gear, low range, four wheel drive and just let Jabari do her thing. I don't even know if I'm in the right place. I feel like I may have gone too far, but I didn't see any signs or anything. I'm shocked that at the gate, there was no warning. They just were like, cool. He has a map that you can't take, but you can take a photo of it find your way. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> wow. This is cute. This has to be right up there with one of the coolest things I've ever done. <laughs> Thank you. 
Um, okay, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I'm... There's a sign, yeah, it's pretty busted. But I'm pretty sure it's got a picture of a car falling off a cliff. Um, I don't know if the camp is past here, but I haven't seen any signposts anywhere. I mean, I'm in the most spectacular setting. It's incredible. But I would also really like to know where I'm camping and it's getting dark, you know, and to might be a fun adventure to drive on these roads when, when there's a little bit of light, but when it gets completely dark, it's very scary. But uh, yeah. My brain definitely started to play tricks on me. I went from excited to illogically nervous extremely quickly. It didn't help that there was no map, no signal, no people, and very serious 4x4 with dire consequences. But in a normal situation, I'd walk this hill and then make an informed decision. So I'm really not sure what to do now. Um, yeah, I don't know if I've gone too far. There's, there's no signboards, nothing. I think I'm gonna turn around. I think it's still, there's enough light so I can go down that hill. Um, and if nothing else, there were villages on the other side of the hill. So I can stop at one of the villages and just ask what's going on. Um, I'm not gonna come back through here tonight. This is, this is madness. It's, uh, it's incredible, but it's madness. This is crazy. Absolutely beautiful, but I would think twice about driving this road during the day with the support vehicle. And I'm trying to traverse it at night. It's a bit scary. It's very, very, very steep and very rocky, and there's probably a 400 meter drop off to my right hand side. heading back down the track now um, but the more I think about it the more I should have just walked down that steep hill that one with the signboard that looked like a car falling off because um, I've got a feeling that that actually might have been the camp the camp might have been right at the bottom of that hill um, shit, no. uh, it sucks not having a map and nothing being signboarded correctly it makes it difficult got to question yourself. It doesn't help that I'm doing this at night. Maybe I'm trying to find one of those little villages that's meant to be marked on the map and ask somebody. Yeah, I don't know. Otherwise, I'm just going to have to set up camp on the side of the road. Um, not ideal. Um, feels like my first real bit of adversity on my solo trip. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure at all. Just trying to think what I could have done differently. There was no GPS coordinates for the camp. There was... There's nothing on the map. Or there's nothing on normal maps. Uh, they didn't give me a map. There were no maps for sale. They kind of just said to me, go straight until you reach the camp. Um, so maybe my fault was turning around, but uh, that 4 by 4 was getting very extreme. Um, but you know, Murphy's Law, I might have, <laughs> I might have already completed the worst of it and, uh, and then turned around and went back through the worst of it. Okay, so I'm going back up the mountain. <laughs> uh, I came all the way down to this little village here. I can't find anybody. Everything's pitch black. Um, but come on, this is what adventure is meant to be about. And I don't know why I'm suddenly full of so much uncertainty. I have everything that I need in Jabari. Jabari has handled everything that I've thrown at her today. I'm, I'm pretty sure the more I think about it, the more I think that that really steep drop off that I came to, that I just decided that this, this was too much, I needed to turn around. Um, I think that was probably, that was the spot that I needed to just go down and, you know, just um, put on my hiking shoes, grab a torch and just go and check it out. Because I've got a feeling that at the bottom of that, that's where the campsite is. But uh, we'll see. Um, Hopefully this is a story that ends well. It's one of those ones where a little bit of adversity makes for the best stories, as long as it all works out. Mm.
driving back through the river. I've now done this section of road three times. So believe it or not, I'm back at that very steep hill. Only a couple of hours later, um, I checked the map that I took a photo of. So it's not even really a very good map, but um, the one I took a photo of at the check-in area, and I checked it against the path that the GPS had been tracking, and it just confirmed that as, as I thought, I'm pretty sure the camp is like right here. Um, I am very nervous of this hill. Weirdly enough, the road back up was less scary because it's dark, so you can't see those drop-offs, you can't see the massive mountains of rock that are here. But um, yeah, I'm on that super steep hill. I am going to walk it first. I want to see what it looks like at the bottom. Um, so yeah, let's see. Let's see what happens. Okay, so it is very steep but it's actually concreted. So, yo, it's extremely steep though, holy shit. Ah, fuck. <laughs> it's very steep though, eh? Yo. I'm gonna give it a go. Trick. She goes super slowly, not to lock up. She starts to lock up, gotta let her run a little bit. Because if you lock up and start to slide sideways, you can roll. Yeah, I'm not happy about this, I'm not gonna lie. Check how out of breath I am, that's how steep this hill is. It's seriously steep, it's probably, I don't know, it's probably 150 meters drop off in, I don't know. It's f***ing steep. I'm just myself. It's f***ing. <sighs> we made it down. Still have to make it back up. Sometime. But we made it down. The, <clears throat> the fact that it's concrete makes a huge difference. Now, can we please just find our campsite? I'd love to see a very clearly demarcated camp. I've had enough of adventuring for the day. Yeah, I have certainly taken Jabari beyond the limits of what I think she's capable of in standard form. I think in standard form, Fortuna would not be able to do this. Certainly not with as little fuss as we have done it. But yeah, campsite now, please, come on. Come on, come on, come on. I found the camp, I found the man. I can't believe it, it's ridiculous. I didn't even film it, but there's a mad river crossing right at the end as well. <laughs> this, this camp is crazy, bro. Really. Yeah. Who designed this camp? It's a camp. <laughs> it's amazing. Craziest place I've ever seen for a camp. Okay, I can set up and make some dinner. Amazing. Matthews came out with a rifle in hand, thinking I must be a smuggler because no one is mad enough to drive that road at night. After that rocky start, we went on to become great friends. I'm not sure a fire and some company has ever felt this good. Another guy not coming. Why not? To that, to, to that way in Topo. No mm -hmm. possible. Not possible, eh? Yeah. <laughs> but Jabari, my car made it. This car's name is Jabari. It's yeah. Swahili, yeah. Eh? Jabari. 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 Yeah, but uh, that's Jabari over there. <laughs>
Uh, fire is always nice, so. Yeah. <laughs> always nice. You have a bad day, you have a nice fire, it's okay. Yeah. So the conclusion of yesterday's drive was just incredible. <laughs> I could never have expected it. I eventually found the place. Actually, after that last video, there was a river crossing that I had to do with a really steep hill. By then, I was not going to stop and record it. So I just missioned up it. Jabari got up it. Jabari did incredibly well yesterday. The guy here is so impressed with Jabari. <laughs> he says most cars just don't make it there. People leave their cars <laughs> up at the top of that hill and then walk the rest of the way. And the people come back there, no, not here in car. Yeah. Um. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Good car. This one, excellent. All thing in firewood, do and it's all water. Ev yeah? Everything's on there. Everything. So yeah, super cool. And then woke up here, and it's uh, surrounded by mountains. We're right next to the Zimbabwe border. It's just incredible. some amazing drone shots. First thing I did this morning was take off the drone and fly back along that road just so you guys could get a real idea of what that road looked like um, because last night you don't really get a good impression of actually how severe it is um, but yeah it was freaking amazing. Uh, and had a good morning around camp, made breakfast for me and Matthew. Did some bird watching. I managed to identify four different types of sunbird in one tree, uh, which was quite amazing. Got a couple of photos, nothing award winning. It's quite difficult to shoot them in that tree because you got to shoot right up at them. But there's some cool shots, so let me know what you think. And yeah, some of those sunbirds are super rare that you only get in this region, so that's really awesome. And then I had a bit of a nap, which was great and much needed. And now me and Matthew are gonna go take a walk. We're gonna go find a waterfall that's here that's apparently really beautiful. And this place is incredible. This must be, I mean, I wouldn't say it's the most remote campsite I've ever been to. You know, when you talk about like desert campsites in the central Kalahari and that sort of thing, those are super remote, the stuff we did in the Sahara. But this must be one of the most inaccessible campsites I've ever been to. It's a serious four wheel drive track to get here, but it was amazing. All is well that ends well. As I said yesterday, you know, sometimes that adversity makes for the best stories afterwards. <laughs> Matthew is 69 years old, he's almost 70, and he refuses to let me carry my own bag. So I was planning on going and hiking by myself, but Matthew wants to come with and he's such a legend. I can't say no to him, but I'll just have to repay him by feeding him way too much. <laughs> so I'm gonna make a, a big pasta for us once we're done with the hike, I think.
Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. With the walk, that's for sure. It wasn't even a bad walk. best addition to the Jabari kit. <laughs> Thanks Neil Betty actually. Neil persuaded me that I had to get a hammock for the setup. It was incomplete without a hammock and I agree now actually. Um, that hike was amazing. How cool was that? I hope you guys enjoyed the footage. I, I hope I did it justice. Back in camp now. Um, I'm gonna make dinner for us just now. For us. I've got a <laughs> I've got an adopted grandfather now, um, so I, I gotta feed him. It was, seems only fair since he's very almost 70 years old and he carried my bag the entire hike and I'm tired and I didn't carry my own bag. <laughs> so I'm gonna make some food just now. I'm meant to be leaving early tomorrow, which seems ridiculous. I should have spent longer here. If you guys do plan a trip to Chimani Mani, one night or two nights, one full day is not enough. There's enough to do here for seven days. And if you include the bird watching, yeah, you can spend a long time here. It's pretty amazing. Um, so yeah, hoping for no rain because I don't wanna I don't wanna have to deal with that road in the rain. That road is pretty harrowing. It's um it's already making me a little bit anxious to think that I have to go back down there. But yeah, just update you guys, hike went really well. I'm gonna make dinner just now. I'll let you guys know if anything else happens. Otherwise, cue the montage for the bolognese cooking. <laughs> dish loosely based on a bolognese that uses a whole bunch of the vegetables in my fridge that are gonna go off otherwise. <laughs> ah! Also, don't get me wrong, it's gonna be delicious, but it's not a traditional bolognese. Now we just leave it to bubble for a while. The longer the better. Hour and a half maybe, we'll see how hungry we get. But while we're doing that, I'm gonna fly the drone. Get some sunset shots. Drone montage now. It has been a pleasure to meet you, sir. Uh, Thank you very much for everything. Thanks very much. And uh, hopefully I'll see you soon. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. What an incredible spot. What an incredible place. Matthew Sharima is his given name, but Matthew is his Christian name and how he introduced himself. Incredible guy, what a legend. He's almost 70 years old, 69 years old, and he's still running the place and looking after everything. What a boss. Just wanted to show you guys, 
this is that hill that I never recorded last time, plus the river crossing. The river's a lot lower though because there were rains the day before I came, so the, the water level has dropped significantly. But still, this is the last little surprise that I had that night that I arrived. And it's really beautiful, so I have to stop and get a couple of photos with Jabari. And then let's tackle this drive back because, yeah, this campsite is incredible. But part of the reason it's so incredible is because it's so hard to get to. So, yeah, let's see what happens. I doubt, despite my best efforts, the footage will do it any justice, but it basically goes from the valley floor up to the mountain level and for some reason they decided to go in a straight line. There's no switchbacks in. Yeah, baby did it this car is a rock star <laughs> you still you still don't get a sense of steepness on camera i don't know why but hopefully the drone shot did it justice but yeah that was a scary one the rest of the drive is still very challenging you basically run along the edge of the massive gorge now but this one was the one that i was nervous about so just gush about the view one last time. <laughs> Chimani Mani, you have certainly charmed me. Um, I will definitely be back. I this, this was probably the one leg of the trip that I was least certain about, and it is incredible. Um, with hindsight, I wish I'd booked for longer, but you're absolutely amazing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but speechless. It's, uh, it, it feels magical, it really does. It's, uh, it's a very special place this, that I've Registered this campsite on iOverlander now, so if anyone wants to come back here, the GPS coordinates are there, so you will actually be able to find it now. <laughs> um, I hope you guys really enjoyed Chimani Mani. Please like and subscribe if you did. Um, it's the easiest way to support the channel. And thank you so much for the ongoing support. I genuinely really do appreciate it. It's super awesome. We've had so much fun over the last 22 months, and um, it's been amazing to have you along for the ride. Cheers. driving away thinking about what I just said there and I keep on thinking of that that line don't be sad that it's over be happy that it happened and yeah I'm not crying you're crying <laughs> it's been incredible and yeah I mean I sometimes wonder like if it's all just a, an ego thing or if it actually I have managed to do what I set out to do and show some people parts of Africa that they never knew existed and maybe just share some of my passion for this continent that I call home, you know. It's always been a it's always been a difficult one because I've always called Africa home and I've always been super patriotic but um, you know, there's a large segment of the population in South Africa that don't believe that I should call Africa home, even though I've got 350 years of ancestry here. Um, and yeah, I love this continent, I really do. And uh, I'm not trying to be a YouTuber, I'm trying to show people the beauty of this place and the potential that there is. And um, that's not exclusive 
excluding the local communities. It has to engage the local communities and it can be good for everyone. It doesn't have to just be, you know, rich Westerners coming in to enjoy these spots. You know, you can uplift the entire community with it. And that's, that's been my aim and my drive from the very beginning. And, um, you know, the, this trip might be coming to an end in the 20, Two months of non-stop travel might be coming to an end, but I'm more determined than ever to make Lost in Africa work. So, you know, oh, I got really emotional there, sorry. <laughs> Let me know what you think, guys, and I'm gonna continue driving and stop talking, okay? After three and a half months in Mozambique and 22 months full-time traveling, I headed to my new home in Cape Town. The trip felt at an end, so I barely stopped other than to sleep and eat. Mozambique is one of my favorite countries in the world. Thank you to each and every person I met on the road, except the police, they're assholes. The last two years have been the most remarkable period of my life. I have learned so much, lost so much, and had so many experiences I'll never forget. Goodbye for now, but rest assured Lost in Africa will be back soon.